When you want to read in data from a file, you must do the following three steps. First, we open the file using fopen. Within fopen, we specify the file name in single quotes, and we usually associate this with some file ID. This file ID will be associated with this file name. And notice how the W flag is missing. This means that we are not going to write to the file. Next, we will read from the file using fscanf. We'll talk about fscanf in a second, but just for now, just know that all the data that we read in using fscanf will be put into an array that we'll call A. Lastly, we close the file using fclose. So let's take a closer look at fscanf. fscanf starts out by having a file ID and this tells us which file we're reading in data from. We also have some the option of including text and format commands and this we use these to help uh, fscanf know how the data is stored within the data file we're interested in. All the data that we read in from the file will be read in in column order and then will be stored in an array that we'll call A. Size A tells us the rows and columns of A, so how data will be stored in A. But it's also the transpose of how the data is stored in the data file. We'll see an example of, of all of this in a second. It's often very helpful to think of size A as being the number of columns in the data file and the number of rows in the data file. And the whole, uh, this whole expression is enclosed in brackets. So let's see an example. Suppose that we have a file called my data and it contains the following data, these, these 10 pieces of information. We can open the file, my data, and this is associated now with the file ID, file2. So we are going to read in from file2, and we only need to for, uh, specify one format in this case, and it will be used for all the pieces of data in the data file. So what we're going to say is that the number of columns in A is 5, the number of rows is 2, and that the size of A is going to be five rows and two columns. We close the file and if we then take the transpose of A we get back the data in a similar type of format as we had in the data file. So it's often more intuitive to work with the transpose of A than A. If you want to read in all the rows and just say there's many rows in this data file, instead of actually using a number here on the right side, you could just say INF instead of 2. You cannot use INF for the columns, only for the number of rows. So we're going to use the data file that we generated in the previous lesson. And we're going to open up this data file using fopen. We're going to read in the data using fscanf and store this in an array called b. And then we're going to close the file. This file contains integers, so I'll use percent %i. And it has two columns and six rows. I want to read in two columns and six rows. So let's see what happens when I read in this file and then display the contents of B. We see that B is converted into a 2 by 6. B transpose will give us back something that looks like what was in our original data file. If we want, we have the option of only reading in, say, four rows of data. Notice how the 4, 8, and 5, and 10 have been removed. If we don't want to specify the exact last row of the data file, we can simply just say inf, and that will read in all rows of data.
Now that we've read in the data and stored it in an array called B, we're free to manipulate the data and use it for whatever purpose we desire.